I have got my eye though on a very nice E92 BMW M3. It won't let me bid. Smoking like crazy. Woo! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today you join me sat in the office once again and I am trying to buy some stock for the forecourt because we have been selling quite a few which is amazing and I need to stock up again. I've been looking at G3 auctions, what I'm looking at today. We're on a Tuesday so G3 runs a good sale and you know I usually would have a look at BCA as well but there's not much at BCA that's grabbed my fancy. There's been a few bits at G3 which I've been watching this morning. Some of them are sold quite strong but some of them have gone cheap. I have got my eye though on a very nice E92 BMW M3, which, strangely it says it's blue, but it looks silver, but it's probably one of those weird blues, isn't it? It's on 71,000 miles. Um, it looks to be really well serviced. Um, it's got warranted mileage, um, lots of MOT. MOT history looks really good. In fact, we'll check that out on vehicle score in a minute. So let's get the pictures up. A bit blurry, that one, unfortunately, but. It looks to be in pretty damn good condition. I've never had one of these V8 E92 M3s before, so I would like to have one. The wheels look in good condition. The fact that it's been well looked after is good news. You can see that it's got Michelin tires on. Uh, yeah, it all looks pretty good. Was that a bit of damage on one of the wheels? No, I think that was just me skipping too quickly. Um, let's have a quick look at the interior as well. So we've got the 360 interior Whew, look at that so it is like the dct i don't know a huge amount about these which may be foolish on my part if i'm considering buying one because i'm not an expert a lot of you tell me i'm not an expert on much but hey ho um but i mean the e90 e92 platform is an incredible car i think it's really nice you can see probably someone will pick up there and say the engine management light's on but you can see that it's actually not running so the engine management light would be on as would all the other lights Looks pretty good inside. We've got the M Sport thingy in the headrest. Looks like we've got a carbon fiber effect type thing. I would just love to try one of these and it might not necessarily be, you, you know, your kind of average, typical smart stock, but we have seen to be doing quite well with performance and prestige stuff. I don't know if that's just because not many people directly in our area really do it. So therefore it's a bit like, oh, it stands out. Um, and it's something that's available in their area. So therefore we seem to be doing well with it, but I wanted to give it a go. Our pricing info, interestingly, from CAP, uh, says CAP clean price of 15,700 pounds, CAP average 14,400, CAP below 13,150, and it says CAP retail is 19,000 pounds. Now, we'll have a look at AutoTrader because I feel like AutoTrader is the Bible when it really comes to the actual retail prices and what people are gonna pay. Um, and that is saying that retail valuation is basically 21,000, Part exchange valuation would be 14,635. Our retail rating uh, is only 10 out of 100, which obviously doesn't sound great, but a lot of our cars, like the RS4 and things like that, have been like that, but they've still sold quite quickly. I think maybe because they stand out in the area and maybe there's not a lot of people looking for them, but if they are, they're gonna end up buying them. I don't know. Um, it's on now and we almost missed it. Over the bits, all done. 13,000 above and about five. 13, five. 13,000 above and about. Gonna hold the best. 13,000 above and about bid. 13,000 above and about. It won't let me bid. 13,000 above and about holding the best once. What? 13,000 above and about bid. Twice all the money goes. That's gone at 13,000. Five. What the hell? On the net. What the hell? And uh, number 69 is the. Uh, Kia Seed XC, 33,000 miler. Uh, booking it over, So, we nearly missed the auction going through because I was waffling too much, and we got to it, and it looks like it's gone on provisional. It was saying 13,500 was the current price, but then underneath it had my bid, which was 13,600, because I was willing to, to bid more than that. I was willing to bid quite a bit more than that. And... Uh, it didn't seem to actually accept it. It didn't seem to update it. And it said it was going as a provisional on 13.5. So hopefully it will at least go through a second time. Um, but yeah, I don't know what's happened there. 
That's weird. Let's. I'm going to send them a screenshot of what happened and we will see what the outcome is. All right, just an update. I've looked back at this and it looks like that my bid was the 13,500 and it was, but I got confused because it was saying bid 13,600, you are the highest bidder. And I thought, well, I will bid 13,600, but it hasn't let me because it's, I just got confused. So we've got it on a provisional. We might still get it. Probably not because I would have said, what is it? That's about uh, two and a half thousand pounds under cap, but they might, they might come back and say they want a bit more. Um, we'll find out, keep you updated. Fingers crossed we can get this for a reasonable price. I would have paid probably up to 16 for it because I think then we could have sold it for 21-ish and had about a five grand margin, which is the sort of margin I like. So we'll catch up with you very soon when we find out what the outcome is. Before we find out whether I've won this BMW M3 or not, I thought we would do a quick vehicle score check as it's completely free to find out our score and it would give us loads of information on the car. So I'm going to type in our registration, which is Yankee Kilo 11 Victor X-Ray Oscar. And it would give us a score from 1 to 999. Ours is 684. Not bad. 40 below average. It tells us 13 years old. Good on MOT comments front. Yearly mileage is around about 5,500 miles, which is pretty good for something like this. Let's have a little look through. Uh, Looking good. Last MT had no comments. Recent MT pass rates high. Mileage is between 50 and 80,000. Bad bits of vehicles over 10 years old, but we knew that already. Tells us a 4 litre petrol. Last seen on 71,000 miles. The mileage tracker, which is really useful to see, is always going up or staying consistent the same. If it dipped down, we'd know that it had probably been clocked. 414 brake horsepower, 155 miles an hour top speed. Tax is a bit of a killer. 735 pounds. But do you care when you can do 0 to 60? in 4.6 seconds. We can also go through all of our MOT history on here as well as getting some tips on cheaper insurance which we might need or maybe even the AI mechanic which may become more relevant later on in this video. Most importantly though when it comes to handing over your hard-earned cash you want to do a history check on the car. You can do one with vehicle score from just £2.95 less than a coffee for their salvage report but the one that I highly recommend is the ultimate plus report. It's just £11.95 don't forget, if you use my code shifting metal 20 you get 20% off, making it just £9.58, I think. And it's going to check loads of stuff from whether it's been imported or exported, whether it's been seen at a salvage auction, whether it's got finance against it, whether it's been a category write-off, whether it's been seen to have mileage clocking, colour change, whether it used to be a taxi, and all that kind of good stuff you'd want to know before you hand over your hard-earned cash because it's going to affect the value of that car. Don't forget to use my code and check out your free score on vehicle score. Here we are in the M3. We did win it, we have got it. I am driving it. But it wasn't quite that simple. There's been a bit of a bumpy road to get to this point, I have to say. So let me tell you what happened. We got a call back from G3 to say that obviously we'd only got it on a provisional, but the auctioneer was fairly confident that he could get it for not a lot more. I think it was 14,000. We will do the figures at the end of this. That I could own this car. I was willing to do a lot more, as you remember, so I said, no problems. If you can get it for that, I will have it. And that is exactly what happened. I decided to have this delivered from G3, so then a vehicle transport company turned up with this on the back of their truck. And right from the get-go, there were some issues because we had to jump start it in order to just get it off of the truck. We had some lights on, which you'd expect, seeing as you've had a flat battery. But not an ideal start, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's an older car. And it's probably one of those things that's been sat around not getting a lot of use. What was a bit more of a problem was the quite nasty misfire that started with this car. I don't think it started straight away, so I wonder if some faults, some codes have been cleared. Um, but then they reared their ugly head again once we tried to get this out. It just, it was just really lumpy on idle, and it just didn't rev up right. It just sounded completely wrong, and worse than that was that it was smoking like crazy and in typical mechanic style they were worrying me I 
thinking that perhaps we had a cracked block or all these other horrible things that happened to M3s. Uh, and we spent quite a lot of time trying to get it right because the car itself is absolutely gorgeous. It's in really nice condition. It's nice mileage, all that sort of stuff. But obviously no one's gonna to wanna to buy it if it was smoking its absolute twat off. The guys in the workshop tried spark plugs to start off with because uh, they thought it might have been something as simple as that, starting off with the easy stuff. When the spark plugs came out, it absolutely stank of fuel, and it had a very weird pencil coil pack on it as well. Basically, someone had taken what was a coil pack that wasn't quite right, or they'd cut it down, and they'd put little bits of extenders in, and obviously tried to make something work just for a while. Uh, so our next thought was that, you know, maybe we just needed to replace the coil pack or coil packs, and that would solve it. But in the end it turned out that it was an injector that was at fault with this and what was happening was that it was just constantly open so as long as the car was running it was just pumping fuel non-stop into that cylinder so much that that cylinder couldn't ignite and therefore it was coming out the exhaust um, unburnt and going through the exhaust unburnt and kind of getting cooked off in the exhaust and therefore smoking like crazy so we've changed the injector we've changed the coil packs and now it is running beautifully and I am feeling very relieved that this car doesn't have major issues. This is actually genuinely my first drive in this or any E92 M3 so I'm very much looking forward to playing around with some of the settings in here and giving this a good thrashing through the lanes. Oh my god! Woo. It sounds incredible. It sounds so like highly strung and revvy in comparison to some of the Audi V8s. Oh, it sounds so good. It sounds so sporty. And it's super snappy gear changes we do have this uh, little switch down here which controls just how snappy you want the gear changes to be which I think I'm gonna wind it well I'll wind it back for a second just to make it slightly more civilized then we've got power mode what does that do gives us more power hopefully listen to that Listen to the little pops and crackles. Let's put our gear change velocity right back up again. Oh yes, I see. I think when the gear change is on more of a soft, it doesn't maybe doesn't blip the throttle as well. Let's try going down again. See, no, it, it, it's not as aggressive, so it doesn't blip the throttle. We'll turn that all the way up. And then... Oh! Okay, so yeah, you want to be driving it with the intensity all the way up to make this thing as fun as possible. <laughs> Jeez! shifts up so dramatically you almost feel like the car like jolt away from underneath your arse. Now I don't think this feels as torquey as the RS4 and RS5 that we had. Maybe because they're quattro and this is rear wheel drive. But I don't know, I think this challenges it for really good sounds and obviously this chassis this E92 they are sublime I think it feels a little bit sportier and a bit more poised than the RS5 of course you get very cool features on this M3 namely that bulging bonnet 
with the vents in it as well that just look super aggressive and make this thing stand out from your standard 3 Series of this era. Woo! Wheel spin into second. Jeez. Let's put it back into drive just for a minute so I can talk to you about the rest of the car I'm getting excited about driving another V8. It's actually really, really comfortable in here, probably more comfortable than I remember other E92s being. I used to have a 335i in this sort of era. You do still have the like inflatable side bolsters that you can pump up, which sadly I need to have fully deflated these days in order to fit in the seats. But we got heated seats, we've got this nice trim inside. Of course, this being a coupe means that we've got the really nice carbon fiber roof on here as well. It just looks awesome. One of my favorite features in here is what looks like, I'm sure it's plastic, but it looks like kind of like a billet uh, surround for your speedometer and your tachometer. And in fact, there's a little guide around the outside as well that depends on the engine temperature. It's got like a soft limiter. So depending on how warm the engine is, is how far it will actually let you rev out. And I think that's quite cool because it's, I know you get that on a lot of cars, perhaps performance cars, but this one is an actual mechanical analog system and it just kind of goes around and yeah, I just think it's really cool. It lets you know that you're definitely in something very special. Got very nice, well, they feel like Villa Aluminium uh, shifter paddles. Whether they are or not, I don't know, but they've definitely got that coldness to them. It makes them feel like they're not plastic. Maybe that's just because I've got the air conditioning going, which is supreme, I have to say. But they do feel like a nice quality. Some cars you get in them, and you've got like these thin little plastic flaps. It's just disappointing, really. And even the satellite navigation in here is like really crisp and bright and nice for something that is 13, 14 years old. This has been in 2011. Still feels like a really, really special car. And I, I have driven an M4, obviously much newer than this. And I don't know whether this M3, I'm putting it out there without having a real side-by-side -side comparison, might have a bit more soul, might feel like a bit more of a driver's car than that M4. Certainly it sounds a lot better and I think it also just feels a bit more manageable, less stabby with the power and less like it just wants to kill you. You can actually really enjoy this. It's quite civilized as well just driving along normally. Put it into drive and you could easily daily drive this if you could afford the fuel bill. So I think actually I've got myself a bit of a bargain. It was a risky one, and for a while there, I thought that I was going to rue the day that I'd seen this car, and it was gonna cost me dearly, but luckily, we managed to sort this car out, thanks to our mechanics at Vera Motors, and I think that the risk should pay off with the potential margin in this, so I'm gonna head back to the garage, and I'll get in the office, and we'll have a little chat about how much we spent, and how much we're hoping to make from this car. Right, so let's have a quick talk through our figures on this thing. Uh, I'm going to use my dealer kit portal because it's very handy for this sort of thing. So you can see our valuation here is saying retail valuation for the car currently. So not bad at all. We'll go to our expenses and we can kind of go through everything that we've spent. Now, obviously, I'd made a bid and I got really confused and it's just been very daft. Just the excitement of buying an M3. Uh, and basically my bid was 13,500. I thought they were going to come back and say, oh, we need 15 or something. But he said, look, what will you go to? And I said, probably at 14 and a half. And he said, I'll try my 14 for you. So we got it at 14,000. So we can see that here. My bid, 14,000. Fees on that was 502 pounds and 80 pence. There was an internet bid surcharge as well, of 42 pounds. And as I said, I had it delivered, which cost me 288 pounds, which is 240 pounds plus VAT, I think. Then obviously we've spent a bit of money on sorting some things with it. So uh, for our misfire, we had a fuel injector and ignition coil. That was 59.45, 33.39. 
We did a service as well, because obviously we want to clear out anything that was bad in the system after we'd had that injector pumping away. So that came to £20.28 for the filters, £62.52 for the oils, and what have we got down? Oh, that was the service as well. So we had to change a sensor of some sort for an EML light, and we had to put a new battery in it. Unsurprisingly, seeing as we had to jumpstart it. So that was £182.40. These will be including VAT. So our SIV stand-in value is £15,301.30, which is not bad at all, is it, with a retail value of 20900 and something. That's not actually what we've got it up for. Let's have a quick look. We've got it advertised currently for £20,470. We may even come down to under 20 just to be in that price bracket but not currently we'll see how it goes um, and that gives us an estimated net margin after the VAT and after all those expenses of £4,301.69 not bad at all I'm pleased with that it could have gone very badly and it was a bit of a risk but it has panned out for the best as you know nine times out of ten it does. That'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll be doing another subscriber giveaway very soon. So subscribe and you'll be in it to win it. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.